Okay, we are at um, section 10.2, um, analysis model, rigid object under constant angular acceleration. Now, uh, I do, you will get the PowerPoints um, from this, but as you can see, it's got a lot of equations, um, and we're gonna go through those, but this is where we wanna end up. Uh, if you recall from chapter two, we have the kinematic expressions for uh, uh, a particle under constant acceleration, linear acceleration. We're gonna come up with kinematic expressions for rotational um, motion. So rigid object under constant angular acceleration. And you'll see that they're very, very similar um, uh, by the time that we finish this. But it's easier for me to discuss this if I go to my um, uh, iPad. Uh, let me make sure I'm ready with my iPad. And there we are. So let's stop the let's stop the sharing of of um, stop the sharing of the uh, uh, PowerPoint and go to the the uh, uh, my iPad. Okay. So uh, this is rigid object under constant uh, angular acceleration. So we know that uh, angular acceleration is the time rate of change of uh, angular velocity. Uh, d omega dt, uh, and so we solve for uh, d, omega, d omega, you get d omega equals alpha dt. So if you uh, integrate the alpha, d, alpha dt, you end up with at, uh, and delta omega is just uh, omega final minus um, omega initial, so we just, basically we just, um, uh, we brought the, um, we brought the um, omega initial from one side to the other, the, uh, uh, from the delta omega. So that's the first one. Uh, uh, omega final equals omega initial plus uh, alpha t. So um, this is equivalent to v final equals v initial plus a t um, in the linear case. Now let's look at uh, omega. Uh, omega equals it, uh, uh, angular velocity is the time rate of change of position. Um, uh, the, uh, so omega equals d theta dt. Um, d theta is equal to omega dt. So let's take the, um, and, and we know that omega, at least omega final, is equal to omega initial plus at. So we substitute, we substitute this, uh, we substitute this for this, and we get this equation here. Um, so uh, delta theta equals the t uh, integral of zero t of omega initial plus alpha t dt. Well, you're gonna end up with a, um, omega initial t uh, plus um, alpha t squared. Uh, I'm sorry, one half alpha t squared. And that's what we have here, omega final, not omega, Theta final is equal to theta initial plus omega t plus one half alpha t squared. Again, for constant acceleration. Um, so um, now let's go to the next one. Uh, now, given uh, two equations, omega final, um, omega final, this one and this one, we solve for t. We solve for t here. Um, so t is equal to omega final minus omega initial divided by alpha. Uh, and on this side, what we're going to do, we're going to see this t here. Um, we have it here and here. We're going to put this into, the, into these two places. Uh, so let's do that. Um, so we have uh, omega final. I'm sorry, theta final equals theta initial plus omega initial t, where we're using this this t here, this t here, um, uh, omega initial times omega final minus omega initial divided by alpha plus one half alpha, uh, omega final minus o omega initial um, divided by alpha squared. That's the t squared. So now let's multiply everything by, you know, we're gonna, first we're gonna subtract um, omega, uh, I mean theta initial on this side, 
And then we're going to multiply everything on, on both sides by 2a uh, on both sides. Um, so we get 2a times theta final minus theta initial equals um, 2. Uh, if we multiply by 2 alpha, the alpha cancels here. So we have 2 omega initial times omega final minus omega, omega initial. And if we multiply this by 2a, uh, well, that cancels. We end up with an a squared, and that, that cancels this a squared here. Um, so we end up with uh, 2 alpha uh, times theta final minus theta initial equals 2 omega initial times omega final minus omega initial plus omega final minus omega initial squared. Now, we, if you multiply this out, you, of course, you get omega final squared um, minus 2 omega initial omega final uh, plus um, omega initial squared. And they rearrange that, and it becomes this equation. Um, and here it's just uh, two, this one is just two omega initial times omega final and two omega initial times omega initial squared. Let's clear all of this away um, so, so you can see it. So this cancels the two omega, uh, you have the two omega initial omega final, that cancels over here. And you're left with, uh, if you rearrange everything, omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus two alpha uh, theta final minus theta initial, again, for a constant A. Now, now we're gonna, instead of the last time, here we solved for T, um, we solved for T, but we're not gonna do that. This time we're gonna solve for A alpha over here. Uh, so alpha equals omega final minus omega initial divided by T. And we're gonna substitute this alpha into this alpha here. Uh, so we have omega final equals omega initial plus, I'm sorry, theta final equals theta initial plus omega initial T plus one half. And then we do the substitution, omega final minus uh, omega initial over T. Now you see this T here uh, and you have T squared there. So all we're gonna be left with is a t um so you're gonna end up uh with t times omega final and t times omega initial if you multiply that out you get theta final equals theta initial plus omega initial t plus uh omega final t over two minus omega final omega initial t over two and if we make if we make uh this uh let's see if we make this um, two omega um, final over two and, and subtract that from this, you end up with uh, the equation below. Um, let's take all that off. Um, so you end up with a, uh, a plus omega initial T over two. And so you pull out the, the one half that you get omega final I mean, theta final equals theta initial plus one half omega initial plus omega final times T, again, for constant acceleration. And you end up with uh, the kinematic equations uh, shown here. Oh, I shouldn't expand it because you can't see some of it. And notice wherever, wherever you see, wherever we used to see a V, um, a V, it's now an omega. Uh, where it was a linear velocity, now it's an angular velocity. Uh, whenever you see theta, uh, I'm sorry, whenever you saw x, now that's uh, theta. And wherever you saw uh, a, now it's alpha. So this was uh, uh, linear velocity, this is angular velocity. This is linear position, this is angular position. This is Linear acceleration, this is angular acceleration. So there's a one-to-one -one correspondence in these equations um, for the kinematic expressions. Uh, let's see, okay, a rigid object rotates in a counterclockwise sense around a fixed axis. 
If the object starts from rest at the in initial angular position, moves counterclockwise with constant angular acceleration and arrives at the final angular position with the same angular speed in all three cases, for which choice is the angular acceleration the highest? Well, let's look at our uh, equations here. And uh, so we have constant acceleration. We have a position. Uh, we're given positions. And we're given uh, omega, omega initial is uh, zero, it's at rest, and the omega final is the same for all three. So if I take this equation, omega final squared equals omega initial plus two alpha times uh, theta final minus theta initial, uh, and let's solve for alpha, uh, alpha, equals to two times omega final squared minus omega initial squared divided by um, divided by theta final minus theta initial. Now, if we know, or we, you should know, just, you know, think of uh, force equals mass, I mean, uh, Acceleration equals uh, force divided by mass. If the mass goes up, the acceleration goes down. If the mass goes down, the acceleration goes up. So whenever you have something in the denominator here, if it goes down, the acceleration goes up. If, uh, let's change colors. If the, the denominator goes up, then what's on this side goes down. So it says, for which choice is the angular acceleration the highest? If we want the highest, if we want uh, alpha to be high, we want theta final uh, minus theta initial to be low. We want it to go down. So let's look at these. Um, three, uh, we're going to look at theta, theta final minus theta initial. So six minus three is three radians. Um, a uh, one radian minus a minus uh, one radian is two radians. And five radians minus one radian is four radians. So um, it looks like if we want the smallest, uh, the smallest uh, theta final minus theta initial, that would be this one here. And if we look at the answer, sure enough, uh, there it is. Um, so uh, we can look at this. Um, yeah, let me go back. Let me finish uh, with the um, uh, let's stop this year and go back to the um, PowerPoint. And let me. Go back to uh, with notes. There we go. Um, so let's go through all of the. You know, we already went through all of these, and we're we already saw that it's it's where it's two uh, two radians. And now we look at this. Uh, you know, we have the the kinematic equation for uh, constant acceleration, um, and and so whenever you have an object like this. Some examples would be like uh, the spin cycle, the tub of clothes, uh, the clothes washer begins from rest and accelerates up to its final spin speed. A workshop grinding wheel is turned off and comes to rest under the action of a constant friction force in the bearings of the wheel. Uh, a gyroscope is powered up and approaches its uh, operating speed. Uh, the crankshaft of a diesel engine uh, changes to a higher angular speed. Whenever you have these types of situations, uh, you uh, uh, you can use these equations. Um, okay, so that ends this um, uh, this ten point two.